Finally take your seats. The servant of God about to preach to us. Ni Dr. Samuel Koranteng Pipim. He's Dr. Samuel Koranteng Pipim. Eh, numu ukona iba briye. Numu ni Amerika umugane. Yandi kibitabo. Numu vuga utumari gisha ili jano hino kandi arera atuzaba nubenshi. Eh, mukum vila no kubahima ana akaba ari numu teologie. As I told you, he's a U.S. best Ghanaian author. He's a speaker, a mentor, and a theologian. Eh, yize, engineer. He's a trained engineer. Kabafite na doctora, se PhD, theology, se theology systematic. And also has a PhD in systematic theology. Iyo theology systematic no vongo no kuiga buri 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 kanu kose tu vugiyo kuiga aga kizani ki icha hani ki repentance ni donk iyo ni o systematic theology buri buri teme iyo se ba 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 kai ga bijai na madoktri. Systematic theology is when you systematically analyze and understand a theme in the Bible and learn it and understand it. Yandi si vita obzinchi haribza yandi tsubge haribi ni bandi kani na bandi. Birenga ibitabo chumi. He has authored and co-authored more than ten books or a dozen books. Eh, avugubutu mo kuisi iyo se chane chane kurubziruko. He preaches around the world at events, especially youth. Mwanye shuri ba kami nuzi ndete nurubziruko ruri moru tangu ira kuikura mubukene. Among university students and young professionals. Nanone yatangije yafashije abantu gutangiza umuryango witwa ngo nurubyiruko rw'iki gihe muri Kristo He also helped to start and sits on the board of directors for the generation of youth for Christ Akabara umwe rero mu bagize uwo muryango kwisi He's one of the board of directors on the in the world Numu kozi w'Imana cyangwa se numuyobozi ufite muri we ubwuzu bwinshi nurukundo rwinshi ko kuvugira aba Kristo ariko cyane cyane yifuza ko aba Kristo bakora bagaragaza isura nziza y'igi Kristo kandi ibyo bakora byose bakabikorana ubuhanga nubwenge binoze He is a passionate leader and advocate for excellence among Christians Eh akunze rero kubwiriza mu muri Afrika haguruka iyo muri Ethiopia muri ministere ya Beza he normally is a frequent preacher or speaker at the Africa Arise Conference at Bezo Ministries in Addis Ababa. That's where we met. I fell in love with him because he has a burden for the youth. He is also a great writer. So every single teaching that is done, he immediately writes a book on it. After, after preaching or after a conference, he finishes by giving them a book. He's a very wise writer. I was greatly amazed by that. Normally he will write after a conference like this and the book is already out. I asked him how he does that. It's understandable. <laughs> he stays all night awake. <laughs> Hallelujah. When the others are tired from the conference and they go to rest, he spends the whole night taking on everything that was preached in the conference and will be blessed to receive something after this conference from him. Let's kindly request him Ahaguruke. to please stand Natwe, tumakira, as we receive him in the name of Jesus.
may be seated. It is such a privilege to be here with you this morning. And I want to thank uh, the Apostle. It was certainly a privilege meeting you in Ethiopia. And I want to thank the musicians. I thought it is only in West Africa that we really sing. But I was extremely delighted to see you show some exuberance. It's such a privilege to be here with you uh, this week. I tried to put some of my stuff on the slides. I don't know whether you can see it or whether there is a remote control. If not, I would signal by saying next and then you would uh, show the slides. Africa Africa Haguruka. What a privilege to be here with you. Because Africa is rising. It doesn't take a genius to know that something is happening to the African continent. And we thank the Lord that right here in Kigali, God has planted his banner. And that which is happening here is going to beam all over the continent. I can't wait to see what the Lord would do. Because from the ashes of your painful experience, God is doing something splendid. And I pray that you would not give up. And that this would continue. My name is Samuel. I'm from Ghana, West Africa. Yes, I am based in the States, but Africa is in me. Yego Nuye Mura America, Arika Africa, Ituye Muri Jewe. Kwame Nkrumah has said, our first president, Kwame Nkrumah said, I am not an African because I was born in Africa. I am an African because Africa is born in me. Presida Wambere Wagana Kwame Nkrumah Yara Fuzati Nhabgondu Munya Afrika Kuwera Yuko Navuche Kumugabane wa Afrika Hugondu Munya Afrika Kuwera Yuko Afrika Yavuche Murijewe and I pray that every one of us will have Africa born in us. It would inspire us to see God's plan for Africa. In case you are not aware, the Bible has a destiny for Africans. And I believe that the Africa Arise movement is a fulfillment of this prophecy. And this morning, I wanted to speak to you because this happens to be the Independence Day weekend of your nation. What you may not know is, even though Ghana was independent in 1957 in March, we became a republic, that is the queen was no longer ruling over us, we became a republic on 1st of July 1960. And so I wanted us to reflect 
what does it mean to be an African and a Christian in this global world? And if we had had the slides ready, you would have seen some things with your eyes. Because on 6 March 1957, a new African was born in the world. That was the first time an African country became independent. Ghana chose as its national symbol a black star. It was a philosophical statement that says a star can be black and a black star can shine. So if you look at the history and culture, every aspect of Ghanaian life, you see the black star. Ghana's independence was also a call for the entire African continent to unite and be together. And so, from our all the African world, from Muhammad Ali, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King Jr., all of them converged in Ghana. Calling for black excellence. I believe we started well. But along the line, we lost it. And so this morning, I want to call us back to that excellence. With a message that says, shine like gold. Gold is a symbol of excellence. Don't settle for brass. It is a simple message. But before we get started, I would invite you to bow your heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we invite you to speak to our hearts. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our message is going to be based, I have skipped all the slides. I have skipped all the slides. So just quickly roll to the section where we have our scripture reading from 1 Kings chapter 14. First Kings chapter 14, reading from verses 21 to 31. The message has only three points. It is a message that is calling us. Don't lose your gold. That's point number one. Don't substitute brass 
for gold that's point number two and don't settle for anything less than gold we are going to learn three lessons from Rehoboam Turiga izinyigisho eshatu izinyingo eshatu turazikura ku buzima bw'umwami Rehoboam Rehoboam was a son of King Solomon Rehoboam yari umuhungu w'umwami Solomon and from his life experience it speaks to us as Africans Iyo turebye ubuzima bwa Rehoboam dusanga butuganiriza twebwe abanyafrika Let's reach together first kings Chapter 14 from verse 21. And Rehoboam was the son of Solomon. He reigned in Judah. Rehoboam was 41 years old when he became king. He reigned 17 years in Jerusalem, the city which the Lord had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. Amara imyaka 17 i Yerusalemu ari ku ngoma mu murwa uwiteka yitoranyirije mu miryango ya Israeli yose ngo abariho azashyira izina rye. His mother's name was Naama an Ammonite. In that one verse, we have the entire biography of Rehoboam. We know his mother's name and his father Solomon. He grew up in the city of Jerusalem. If you have time and do all the calculations, he was born when his grandfather David was alive. Uramutse ukoze imibare wasanga Rehoboam yaravutse sekuru Dawidi akiriho. Rehoboam had an opportunity to be the very best king. Rehoboam yari yarahawe amahirwe yo kuba umwami w'igitangaza. His father was the wisest man who ever lived. Impamvu nuko ise yari umunyabwenge wa mbere wabayeho kuvisi yaremwa. There were priests and prophets in Jerusalem to tutor him in spiritual things. In other words, he ought to have shone like gold. But as we are going to discover, he settled for brass. If you compare it to the Chronicles account, for the first three years, he was doing very well. Afterwards, some uh, professors and university students from the University of Jerusalem came, gave him wrong advice, and he sacked all his father's advices. Ariko nyuma iyo myaka itatu uza gusanga hari abasore bamwegereye bamuhinama zitarizo maze Rehoboam yirukana abajyanama base bari baramufashije And from there on he started going downhill Kuva mu sirero atangira kumanuka In verse 22 we are told Judah did evil in the sight of the Lord Yusomye 22 muri icyo gice bibiliya yatubwira ngo buke abayuda bakora ibyangwa nuwiteka manner of sins came into Israel. And the Bible says there were even Sodomites in the land. Idol worship. And the Bible says as a result God decided to punish him. In verse 25 the Bible says in the fifth year of the king Rehoboam God sent Shishak king of Egypt to come and discipline him. Now 
Shishaki umwami wa Egiputa arazamuka atera i Yerusalemu kuharwanya Shishak did not come to destroy Jerusalem Shishaki ntabwo yaje kuharandura Burundi Instead he entered Jerusalem went to the palace went to the temple and took all the gold away Ahubwo uyu mwami yaje Yerusalemu yinjira mu nzu y'ubwami asahura ibintu by'ubutunzi bwose byo mu nzu yuwitega nkuko 26 tubwira When you read verse 26 Murongo wa 26 We are told Shishak took away the treasures of the house of the Lord the treasures of the king's house he took away everything Bibiliya tubwira mu rongo wa 26 ngo asahura ibintu by'ubutunzi byo mu nzu y'uwiteka nibyo mu nzu y'umwami arabijyana byose ajyana n'ingabo ziza habu zose Salomo yari yaracurishije All the shields that Solomon made there were 300 golden shields very large shields he took them all away Umwami Salomo yari yaracurishije ingabo magana tatu zikozwe muri zahabu nziza uyu mwami shishaki arazisahura If you want to know the amount of gold Shishak took away you only have to go to chapter 10 Ushate kumenya zahabu shishaki yatwaye anyaga i Yerusalemu wanyarukira mu gice cya 10 in chapter 10 is where the queen of Sheba came to visit Solomon. Kuko mu gice cya 10 dusanga ariho umugabe kazi w'isheba yasuye Salomo. She brought a lot of gold and spices. Amuha ibihumura neza byinshi amuha na zahabu nyinshi. The Bible describes the wealth of the nation. Bibiliya rero igaragaza ubutunzi bw'icyo gihugu. But because of sin. Ariko kubera icyaha Rehoboam lost all the gold. Rehoboam atakaza zahabu yos. Lesson number one. Ekaro dukure misomo riyambere. Don't lose your gold. Nuzata atakaze zahabu yawe. Gold is a symbol of everything valuable that has been bequeathed. That is a legacy to you. Zahabu ni chimenye to chibi nubjo se bjiza jaga chiro wahawe wachirie ibi nubjo sufata ngumuraje wawe Many of us are in danger of losing our goal Veshi hano tukuichaye turimo turataka za zahabu ya Our nations are in danger of losing the goal Ibi hukubjachu bifite akaga kukobirimo birataka za zahabu ya abjo I am not just talking about natural resources Iyo mfuga zahabu undajirango nute echeleze umutungo kamere wiki hugu I'm talking also about spiritual resources Ndashaka kufuga nubutu nzibgo mumuka Two weeks ago I was in Tanzania and I was giving a lecture to a group of young people. And I told them the story of Tanzania. During the colonial era. There were different provinces. We have Tanganyika, Zanzibar, etc. One day, a Canadian geologist was walking and he saw some Tanzanians from Tanganyika. And he saw some Tanzanians They were playing games on a board using some big stones. Yitegereje asanga hari imikino barimo barakina ariko bakoresha amabuye hari amabuye barimo barakinisha he observed them playing the game and he observed the stones. Then he said, I want to buy the stones. How much? I'll give you some little money. Some trinkets. So they sold the stones. Then they said, Mr. White man, if you are interested in the stones, 
the villages all around we play the same game using the same kind of stones Baba Tanzania babwira wa mu Canada batahubwe icyo tazi ibiturage cyangwa se ahantu abantu batuye muri kano gace dukina uyu mukino kandi aya mabuye uguze niyo dukinisha ngwe no tukujyanu ya rebe You can go and buy the stones Ushatse nayo wayabagurira nimushaka mabuye Actually the stones were diamonds Arika yo mabuye yari diama batabiz so he went and bought the diamond. And then he thought, if the people in this area all play games with these stones, then the land must have diamonds. Because So he went to the chief, I want to buy your land. Arangije ajya ku umutegetsi cyangwa se umwami w'icyo gihe muri ako karere arangaje ati genda shaka kugura ubutaka. Ah the chief said ah, there is so much stones here you can buy the land. O mwami aramubwira ati byo ni kibazo cyoroshye gura ubutaka utware haramabuye menshi. How much? Angahe. Little money? Amafaranga make. Trinkets? Ni myenda. Alcohol? Inzoga. So the king sold the land. Umwami amugurisha ho butaka bwose. And then Dr. Williamson immediately after buying it he wrote to the uh, government in London I want the exclusive right to mine diamond in this area. Uwo muzungu yitwaga Dr. Williamson akimara kugura ubwo butaka ahita yandikira leta y'ubwongereza ati nabonye ahantu mushobora gukura amabuye y'agaciro ariko murampa ubutegetsi cyangwa se ni jewe wa mbere ubasha gukuramo umugabane w'ibyo muri buhacukure nahangi to this very day kugeza uyu munsi the Mwadui diamond mines is the world's oldest continually producing diamond mine in the world kugeza uyu munsi ibirombe bya diama byo muri ako gace uwo muzungu yaguze nibyo birombe bitanga zahabu nibyo birombe bitanga diama ikomeye kandi nyinshi kwisi hose it has produced thousands of kilograms thousands of carats of diamond ibyo birombe bimaze gutanga ibiro ibihumbi nibihumbi bya diama bitabarika so many times the gdp of tanzania ibyo birombe bitanga umusaruro ukubye umusaruro kunyungu w'igihugu cy'a tanzania inshuro nyinshi we had gold diamond in our hands we didn't know the value twari dutunze zahabu na diama mu ntoki zacu tutazi agaciro kabyo i can tell the same story in zambia copa shobora kuvuga iyo nkuru mu gihugu cya zambia ariko noneho nkavuga kumuri kuri kwivre cyangwa se umuringa my country is ghana we have gold reka mbabwire ni gihugu cyanje cya ghana twebwe dutunze zahabu but we lost it ariko twarayitakaje only 10% comes to us dufata 10% bya zahabu y'igihugu cyacu 10% gusa we have oil dufite amavuta ibitoro ladies and gentlemen i guess my message is don't lose your goal muzirikane ko butumwa bwanje buvuga buti ntutakaze zahabu ufite and not just natural resources kandi ntimubyumve ko ari umutungo w'igihugu gusa muri ubwo buryo oya don't lose your gold of spirituality no zatakaze zahabu y'ubunyamwuka bwawe all it takes to lose is is you stop praying and you stop studying your bible uzicho bisaba bisaba kureka gusenga no gusoma bibilia ukabura itakaje don't lose your gold of discipline no zatakaze zahabu yawe ya discipline cyangwa se uburyo wigengesera mu buzima don't lose your gold of time consciousness no zatakaze zahabu yo kumenya uburyo ugenga igihe cyawe don't lose your gold of excellence no zatakaze zahabu yo buryo ukora ibintu byiza bitunganye it takes is a little mistake uzicho bisaba agakosa kamwe wihanganira and your gold would be gone zahabi kayoyo kityo rehoboam lost the gold rehoboam yatakaje zahabu the temple was still standing but it was empty inzu yuwiteka yari cyubatse ariko yari vide nta cyari kirimo imbere the palace was still there but the gold was gone 
inzu y'umwami yari nziza kubayireberaga hanze ariko imbere bari barahasahuye but what rehoboam did next was worse ari kicibabaje icyo rehoboam yakurikijeho cyari kibi cyane in verse 26 he lost all his gold muzi mpamvu umurongo wa 226 bibi rivuga ngo but he was too proud to acknowledge that he had lost his gold. So he manufactured counterfeit gold. And he said, Let's look at it verse 27. Then King Rehoboam made bronze shields in their place. Instead of the gold he had lost, he made bronze in their place. And he committed them in the hands of the captains of the guard who guarded the doorway of the king's house. Lesson number two. Don't substitute brass for gold. You see, Rehoboam thought brass looks like gold. In the sun, it shines like gold. And so he said, having lost my gold, I will pretend I still have gold. And so he instructed University of El Kigali to come up with brass to look like exact shields. Because counterfeit fake fake I remember when I arrived in the United States years ago as soon as I arrived I don't know how the businessmen they got my name and wrote me a letter said, Dr. Pippin, that time I was not even Dr. Pippin. Says, Mr. Pippin, here is a free gift for you. Mr. Pippin, Mr. Pippin, hano dufite impano dushaka kuguha. He said 24 carat fox gold. Turashaka kuguha zahabu ya makara cyangwa se igipimo cy'a 2024. It is yours as a gift. All you have to do is to send a little money to reclaim it. I came from a very poor home. When I arrived in the United States, I had six dollars. Life was hard. In fact, I couldn't even afford toilet paper. So when I use public facilities, then I'll pull extra toilet paper and that's the one I use at home. So when the company said bring some money if you calculate all it's about $30.35 cents. Bring it and then you claim your gold rings. I didn't have the money. But I did some calculation. If I take the gold rings, I will ship them to Ghana. We will sell it. I will get a lot of money. And then I can use the money. I had a wife. She's still my wife. She also didn't think like me. She didn't think. I convinced her, let's go and raise a loan for that money. Bring. We send the money. 
few weeks later the package came we opened it we took out the ring it was not 24 karat gold remember I'm from Ghana I know gold okay. it was not even 12 karat gold in fact it wasn't even gold it was brass brass in America when you do that you can sue the company because that is fraud but before I could sue them I took the old letter and read it again and three times it said we will give you 24 karat fox gold. 100% fox gold. You know, I pronounce it fox, but it's a French word. F A U X. Fox. Fox. <laughs> And so they said, I'm giving you 100% fake gold. And then they said, and then I stood, I looked like a fool. Lost his gold and now fake brass. Lesson number one, don't lose your gold. Lesson number two, don't substitute brass for gold. See, many of us are in danger of substituting brass gold. Instead of the gold of a home, we are substituting houses. Instead of communion with God, which is gold, we are substituting fake prayer. Instead of the authentic word of God, we are substituting devotional books. Instead of gold, we are substituting brass. Don't lose your gold. Don't substitute brass for gold. When you substitute brass for gold, we call it hypocrisy. You are pretending. Even as nations, we are substituting brass for gold. Instead of good quality music, we are substituting noise. Instead of good education, we are substituting piece of paper diploma. Instead of godliness, we are substituting religion. Don't substitute brass 
substitute brass for gold. See, it is one thing losing your gold, it is another thing substituting brass for gold. But the third thing Rehoboam did was worse. A time came when he actually believed that brass is equal to gold. Brass became normal. In fact, you find it in the next verse, verse 28. Whenever the king entered the house of the Lord, the guards carried them and brought them back into the guard room. You see, formerly, the 300 brass shields were a symbol of God's blessing. Anytime the king rode instead, the people who carried the brass shield would march in front of the king and it will be saying, Our God is great, He has blessed us with these. But now the gold is gone. And he got the engineers to give him brass, which looked like the original one. And he, he instructed them when you carry the brass much confidently as if it is gold. So you can see President Rehoboam with his pleas, the security, everyone, and he's marching confidently, the brass shining. And every time he marched, the brass was in front of him, and everyone believed that it was gold. Lesson number three. Don't settle for anything less than gold. You see, you can get so used to brass that in your mind, brass is okay. And if someone says, uh, Madam, uh, sir, uh, it is brass, and you say, what's wrong with it? It reminds me of my niece. She was very good. But when it came to math, she wasn't doing well in mathematics. One day she came back from school. She was so happy and excited and literally dancing. She said, Daddy, I got the best grade in math. I said, you? She said, yes. I said, let me see. So she gave me her report. I said, Jessica, this is C. She said, what's wrong with that? Even the best students in my class got C. Therefore, C is okay. See, she looked around, C, 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 and she looked at herself, C, therefore C is A. 
Uwa mkwabga, yale mjabahanga wase wa mngishuri, babo nye si, arewa pirotea sanga na wea wa nye si, arewa katibja wa minunacho bitkwai. The standard is no longer A, the standard is C, and C is okay. Iji pima chogu tindi mibare na abgo chichiri A, changwa segu tindi la kuisha na kuisha na manota menshi, ahogo chama nutekuri si, kukona wandi wa usariyo babo. When you dress in a particular way, and they said, "Sister, this dressing is not okay." I said, "What's wrong with it?" Ushabara kuburu mukoga changu mudam ukambara muburijo butei soni abantu kaku gatari ko wambaye na abukavu kuti bitkwaichi. Brass. Uono muringa. And honestly, they don't see anything wrong with it. Kandi na kambabuki zukuringo abantu watunzu muringa ba 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 wana hachu tkuai. Because they have convinced themselves that brass. Is equal to gold. Koko bumbi shishibite chere zobja aboko umuringu ngana na zahabu niom hamvu wa wana na chitkwae. You see, when you substitute brass for gold, we call it hypocrisy. You are pretending. Iyo wafundi je zahabu mu muringa tubji tuburijari ya kukuburi mushusha nyaba anunimba na koreshi hotel. But when you believe that brass is equal to gold, we call it Duplicity. Another word for it is you are crazy. Ariko iyo avunje zahabu mumuringa ukizera ko zahabu ingana numuringa tubjita usazi uwa sazi hivisa hivihuanye hivingana. In Second Thessalonians chapter two, the Bible says a time is coming when we shall not receive a love for truth, and we will believe a lie, and we are going to be down. You some ye mwa Thessalonica ba ambere ijiche cha kabiri bibiri ravuango ijiye chira jekani chira sohoye ubwa benshi ba taza chiro kuri ahubwa waza chiri chinyama ba kacha chira ba kache mir. My message. Don't lose your gold. Your gold of honesty and integrity. Your gold, your gold of spirituality. Don't lose your gold of excellence. Your gold of purity. Don't lose the gold. And if you have lost it, don't substitute brass. For Stop pretending. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. And He will restore the gold back to you. And by all means, never be content with anything less than. In your workplace, Mukazukora, in your governance, Zibgawe, in your school, Nishuri Wigamo, the standard must always be excellence goal. Nothing less. Don't lose it. Don't substitute for it. And don't accept anything less. It is very likely that there are some people here who have lost their gold. Your gold of purity. Your gold of honesty and integrity. You have lost your gold of spirituality. You know it. But you are pretending. You go through the motions. Sing the songs. Try the prayer. Go to the church, but you know deep down the goal is gone. In your marriage, the gold is gone. You know it. 
but you come to church you put your arm around your wife or your husband you hold your hand you pretend the gold is there but it's gone you have a big house but the cold is gone and you've been pretending quit pretending the bible says God can restore the gold in the book of revelation Jesus says come buy of me gold tried in the fire buy from me how much does it cost Isaiah says it is free all who are thirsty come and buy free all you have to do is to say Lord I have lost the gold Lord, restore it to me I am tired of pretending I am tired of hypocrisy and the Lord will give it back to you free. Mary Magdalene lost her gold. Maria Madalena Her gold of purity. But she went to Jesus. Asanga And Jesus restored it back to her. Yesu amusubiza zahabu. Peter lost his gold. When he lied and cursed. But when he repented. The Lord restored him. The Lord can restore every one of us. Why are you pretending? Very simple message from Rehoboam. Many of us, when we were in the village, we were honest, dedicated Christians. But when we came to the cities, we started losing the gold. Then we started pretending. And the time came when we think that our pretense is okay. So we pretend in our personal lives. And it comes to our spiritual life. This week, Africa arrived. It is a call for Africa. Number one, don't lose the diamond, the gold, the oil, and all the resources God has given us. And if for whatever reason we have lost it through corruption, through whatever other means, let's Quit pretending that we have it. On our knees. The Lord can lift us up again. And he has started already. In the Africa Arise movement. God is beginning to restore the goal. But he needs you. He needs me. Every one of us. In education. In the arts and media. In governance. I mean the seven mountains. We must restore the goal. And the Lord will help us. I'm sure the Lord has given you the message you need. And you want to commit this morning. And you want to say, Lord, I'm tired. I feel empty inside. I have pretended 
that for too long. Mana maze kubesha maze kubindyarya igihe gihagije. And this morning Ichi jitondo, I want to stand up and say restore my goals. Ndahaguruka mvuge nti mana subiza zahabu natakaje. If that is your wish. Ibyo nimba ari byo wifuza mwene data. I'll invite you to stand. Reka mbasabe ngo duhaguruke. As we pray. Dusenge risengesho. You see Jesus Christ is in the habit of restoring gold. Reka mbabwire ngo Yesu ari mu bucuruzi afite ingeso yo gusubiza zahabu. That is what transformation, conversion, that is what it is all about. In whatever area of your life that you have lost, by standing up, you are saying, Lord, help me. And, and there is never such a prayer which Jesus would not listen to. He would give back to you that which you have lost. Let us bow heads. Heavenly Father, we have heard your voice many of us had the opportunity like Rehoboam we got the best training from our father Solomon grandfather David you gave us some valuable legacies but we have lost them. We have lost them all. And because of pride, we have been pretending. We know we have been pretending. But this day, your spirit has convicted us. That if we do not surrender, a time will come when we shall actually believe that brass is gold. Lord, remove the scales from our eyes. And may you give us back that which has been lost. The sin that has taken residence in our lives through the merits of Christ, may you forgive and restore us again. In our workplace, Lord, help us to be living examples of excellence. In our recreation, in the way we listen to music, all the arts help us to be exemplified of excellence. And this week during the conference, in every aspect of these seven mountains, lift us up. And may today be the beginning of a walk in excellence. May we shine like gold. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Nune kure yo mumaso awe Nungure huku kawawewera Usubi zemo kunezezwa na na jiza 
Father, thank you for your word that you sent to us this morning, bringing us back in line, bringing us back in your way to give us a new heart. Thank you for gold that you have restored in our lives. Thank you for the sweet fragrance that you brought upon our lives. Bless your servant that has preached to us. May you add to him, Lord, more wisdom. Give unto him more anointing this entire week that he will bless us again in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let us applaud the Lord Jesus for his word. Thank you so much, Dr. Samuel. Mwene data, niburi hano utarakira gakiza, utarakizwa tuta huda kijishwe nda kusawa nguvuga bandi wa soka wagiye we uze wakira gakiza tulagute gereje imane gumugisha na wangu likila kuri televizio kuri radio kuri muda sobga abandi tutaha nenu mwami yesu kristo tulaza guhura kumungoroba sakenda kuri yeto if you're here and you're not yet saved please don't go home without receiving salvation and those following online receive Christ with us the rest will see you later today Karibu turakwakirie Welcome if you want to get saved Karibu wino wakire Yesu Come and receive Christ Bande turahura saa 9 kuri eto We will see you at 3 pm at eto Dune kure Yomu maso hawe Numure humu kawawe wera Osuwi semo kune seskwa nagakiza Muti mutunganyi murinje Nune kure, nune kure, yomu maso We are waiting for you to be Christ. Come and receive the Lord Jesus. Oh, 
Thank you for coming. And those following on radio and television. Those following us online. On Facebook. On Facebook. And you want to receive Christ. We are going to pray with them. May you repeat this prayer. Please close your eyes. Lord Jesus I'm a sinner I give you my heart this morning come into my heart be the king be the savior of my life restore me of everything that is binding me restore me from everything that gives me trouble you alone rule in my life may you have authority tie me with the cords of your love that I be your servant thank you for forgiving my sins and washing me with the blood of Jesus I've been delivered I am new please write my name in the book of life in the name of Jesus Amen 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 Please, 